In the proof of Jordan's lemma, we will need an inequality. In this video, we will see graphically and algebraically why this inequality holds. The inequality will be sine of x is bigger than or equal than 2x over pi. So why is that true for x between 0 and pi over 2? Well, we have the graph of sine of x over here and the graph of 2x over pi over here. And we see that the graph of the sine is above the graph of 2x over pi as long as x is between 0 and pi over 2. So why is it so that's a graphical proof, but we rather have a more firm proof, a more algebraic proof. In order to do that, we define the function f of x equals sine of x minus 2x over pi. So we take the difference and we want to show that this is always positive. So this difference uh, looks uh, like the graph we have over here. Uh, we see again algebraically, of course, that this is true. Uh, sorry, we see graphically that this is true. Furthermore, we know f of 0 equals 0. Okay, that's obvious. Plug in 0 in f of x. And we also see that at pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 equals 1. And if you plug in pi over 2 over here, we get 2 over pi times pi over 2 equals 1. So 1 minus 1 equals 0. So we see that the f of pi over 2 is also equal to 0. Now I want to show that this graph is always above the x-axis. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we see that our f of x, if we differentiate twice, we get minus the cosine of x. Uh, cosine of x is always positive between 0 and 2 pi over 2, which means that minus cosine of x is always negative. Now the idea is as follows. Uh, we show that the graph is always above uh, the axis by showing that if we would have some x star where we cross the axis before we are at pi over 2, that then in that case the function would always decrease, would always remain below the axis. So we're going to show that if we have this x star over here, that we s continue decreasing and that we cannot get up back to zero, which is needed because f of pi over 2 equals zero. So how are we going to show that? So, so suppose we have some f of x star equals zero. Now we know uh, uh, and that, that this, this is the first zero. Then we know that the derivative has to be smaller or equal to zero because over here you are positive. Uh, and you are at zero, so you are decreasing at this moment. So f prime of at your xr is negative, smaller or equal than zero. Uh, now, take any x over here. For example, we have our x over here. Uh, then we know the f prime of x uh, equals your uh, f prime of x star over here plus integrating f double from x star to x. And now we know that this quantity is negative because your f double is negative and your f prime at x star is negative. So your f prime at your x is some, something negative. And then your f of x equals the same trick, f of at x star, which is zero, and this, this one is negative now, so your f of x is also negative. So all your f of x's are, they are all negative for all x starting at x star and going on up till pi over 2. So if you would have an x star where your f of x is uh, zero, then further on all your function values are negative, including up to the value for x equals pi over 2. Pi over 2 was included over here. And that's a contradiction because f of pi over 2 equals zero. So that means you cannot have such an x star where your function is uh, negative, which, sorry, where your function equals zero, which means that your function, because it's continuous, is always uh, bigger than zero.